Thank you very much, Presiding Officer. And could I start with how we are now more regularly starting to do these proceedings by wishing Steve Clark and the team all the very best tonight. It is a major. It is a major game as the Scottish national men's team are now just two matches away from potentially qualifying for the World Cup for the first time since 1998. And I know the whole Parliament will wish them well, the players on the pitch, the manager, the team around them and of course the outstanding Tartan army who will be roaring them on to victory tonight. And we wish them all the very best. Can I ask the First Minister, in the middle of a cost of living crisis, with so many families struggling, why is her government allocating another £20 million for an independence referendum? First Minister. Presiding officer, can I uh, also begin uh, by taking the opportunity to wish Steve Clark and the team every success at Hamden this evening? I um, will be there cheering on Scotland. We all want Scotland to win and to qualify for the first uh, World Cup we would be at in a long, long time. Uh, that said, uh, I think I can speak for uh, everybody at Hamden this evening uh, when I say that uh, no matter how strongly we will be supporting Scotland, a bit of all of our hearts will be with Ukraine uh, as we continue to stand in solidarity with Ukraine in this hour of need. Um, and just as the Tartan Army... Just as... The Tartan Army this evening will, as it always does, belt out Flower of Scotland. I hope we also stand and show real passion for the Ukraine yeah. national anthem as well this evening. But good luck to Steve um, and to the team. Um, and can I also take the opportunity to thank Douglas Ross? Uh, can I thank Douglas Ross warmly uh, for giving me the opportunity today to set out exactly why giving the people of Scotland an opportunity to choose a better future yeah. is so important yeah. at this particular uh, moment in time. Uh, the resource spending review that Kate Forbes set out yesterday in many ways uh, sets out the very heavy price that people across Scotland are paying right now for continued Westminster yeah. decision making. Yeah. UK government decisions have cut our budget this year, by more than 5% in real terms, they will constrain growth in our budget over the next four years to 2%, while inflation is close to 10%. Inflation in the UK, of course, which, thanks to the folly of Brexit, is the highest of any G7 country. Every year right now, the Scottish Government is having to invest more than 700 million pounds mitigating the impact of Westminster policies that Scotland did not vote for. The bedroom tax, the rate clause, the removal of universal credit, plunging more people into poverty. So yes, presiding officer, I think that 20 million pounds, 0.05 per cent, one half of one tenth of one per cent of the entire Scottish Government budget to give the people of this country the opportunity to choose a better future, yes, is and will be a really good investment. Yeah. Dr. Ross. The First Minister's answer never once mentioned the cost of living crisis no. No. that no. Scots are no. facing right now. Never once even attempted to address that issue. She gets very excited, very animated, speaking about independence and dividing our country all over again. But not a single word to the people struggling right now who do not understand why her government is prioritising another independence referendum. Because spending £20 million on a divisive referendum in the middle of a cost of living crisis is shameful. Yeah. Nicola Sturgeon's eye is off the ball all over again. She is obsessing about independence when people across Scotland overwhelmingly want the members, focus to members, be Mr. Ross, members, please resist the urge to heckle from a sedentary position, Mr. Ross. She's obsessing about independence when people across Scotland overwhelmingly want the focus to be on the issues that really matter to them. Yeah. So let's look at that twenty million pounds. 
That could pay for more police officers, mm -hmm. more teachers, more nurses. It could pay more support for people facing rising energy bills and higher costs at the supermarket. Charging ahead with a plan to divide us is the wrong priority, when now, more than ever, we need to pull together, using the strength and security we get as part of the United Kingdom to see us through the cost of living crisis, just like it saw us through the COVID pandemic. First Minister, just how much worse does the cost of living crisis have to get for individuals right across Scotland before you will divert money away from an independence referendum? First Minister, Douglas Ross stood up and said, I didn't mention the cost of living crisis. Can I uh, suggest that Douglas Ross might want to consider what it is that is causing the cost of living crisis? It is soaring inflation. Yep. As I said in my answer, inflation that in the UK, thanks in large part to the utter folly of Brexit imposed upon Scotland by Tory uh, governments, is the highest of any G7 country. That is part of the price of Westminster government. It is a Tory created cost of living yep. crisis. And how much, how much worse does it have to get before the Conservatives take it seriously and provide real, proper help to people across this country? And Douglas Ross stands here and asks me about £20 million, as I said, one half of one tenth of one percent of the entire Scottish budget, to give the people of this country the option of a better future. Douglas Ross never stands here, um, as he should, and apologises for the fact that this government, every year, is required to invest more than £700 yeah. million pounds yeah. to mitigate Tory policies that we yeah. in Scotland don't vote for. That's to mitigate the awful rape clause imposed on Scotland by the Tories. That's to mitigate the awful bedroom tax imposed on Scotland by the Tories. That's to mitigate the poverty that Tory policies are plunging so many yeah. people into. To mitigate the austerity uh, that we heard uh, the Glasgow Centre for Population Health Research say it has caused a stalling in improved life expectancy in Scotland and across the UK. So yes, I do think £20 million to give Scotland the choice uh, of a better future, a Tory-free future, is a good yeah. investment. Um, and let's, <laughs> let's lastly, presiding officer, although if we look at the opinion poll, Scott, uh, presiding officer, I suspect Scotland's uh, well on the way back to being Tory free anyway. Uh, but can we say this? Let's, let's, remind, let's remind ourselves that thanks to this government, we have more police officers in Scotland. Thanks to this government, uh, we have more primary school teachers than at any time since 1980. Uh, so I'll go on with the job of delivering for Scotland. And yes, I hope freeing Scotland from continued Westminster Tory government. I mean, the, the, the First Minister now just makes it up as she goes along. Yeah. She's saying yeah. that the UK, the UK government is doing nothing to help people. £37 billion yeah. Yeah. investment in this country Absolutely. to help those who are struggling. Eight million people of the lowest earners across Scotland will get at least £1,200 in additional support announced by exactly. the Chancellor just last week. And despite, again, what the First Minister tried to say in her first answer, we know that her government has received the biggest block grant from the UK government ever, and they have squandered it. The spending review shows the real cost of the SNP's failures for the Scottish public. A fortune wasted on ferries, mm -hmm. on Bifa, on Prestwick Airport, mm -hmm. failures at Queen Elizabeth Hospital. The list goes on and on and on. And the consequences of those failures for our country are devastating. The Institute for Fiscal Studies says the next few years will mean, and I quote from them, really big cuts in planned spending on public services. First Minister, because of your government's failures, we are facing severe cuts to budgets for the police prisons, schools, councils, rural affairs, enterprise, tourism and higher education. Scotland is paying the price for Nicola Sturgeon's mistakes. The spending review was damning. Doesn't this all show 
that we are facing the worst financial outlook from a Scottish Government since devolution. First Minister, these issues in turn, uh, presenting officer, let's firstly look at the, the help uh, announced by the Chancellor uh, last week. Um, and I'll just say in passing, it is deeply regrettable that it took yet again the party gate yeah. crisis that yeah. Boris Johnson yeah. wanted to divert attention from for the Chancellor to lift a single finger. But if, you take the, if you take the universal support, the £400, uh, welcome though that is, it is a fraction of the projected increase in energy costs that families across the country are facing. Uh, you take uh, the support for the lowest income families, again very welcome, but it doesn't even come close to putting back the £1,000 taken out of the pockets of lowest income families, uh, given the, the clawback of the universal credit £20 a week. Uh, so there is much, much more needs to be done from the UK Government. And secondly, on uh, the Scottish Government's block uh, grant, and wouldn't it be better, actually, if we be, had responsibility for raising our own revenue than, rather than having to rely on a block grant from someone else? But Douglas Ross says it's the biggest ever. This year, Scotland's budget, because of Westminster Tory decisions, is reduced in real terms by 5.2%. So if that's the biggest ever, I'm not sure that's much for the Tories to crow about. Um, and next, Douglas Ross says that uh, spending money to save Bifab, to save Ferguson's, to save Presswick Airport is wasted money. Well, I think that says everything we need to know about the Tory approach to jobs. They don't care about people's jobs. So yesterday, finally, presiding officer, Kate Forbes uh, set out ambitious plans uh, backing our priorities of tackling child poverty, of protecting public services, of moving to net zero and supporting the economy. Do I wish we had more money to allocate? Yes, I do. But this government's budget is largely determined by decisions taken by the Tories. And therefore, everything Douglas Ross has just said actually makes the argument, doesn't detract from the argument, it makes the argument for this parliament, this country, becoming independent. Yeah. First Minister, stop running from your failures and start to own them. Yay! This blaming the Westminster bogeyman doesn't cut it with the public who are struggling because your decisions are devastating for the people of Scotland. The SNP, the Scottish Government, are the ones running our finances into the ground. And all we've heard from the First Minister today is they've got cash for another referendum but cuts for Scotland's public services. Yeah. And the most damaging cuts are going to be on Scotland's young people. The First Minister used to grandstand and she said she would close the attainment gap between rich and poor. How's that going, First Minister? She promised to make education her number one priority. How's that going, First Minister? The Scottish public were told to judge her on education. Well, she's failed and now she's given up even trying. The education budget is being slashed to the bone. The First Minister likes to talk about Scotland's future. Well, we want money invested in Scotland's future, but on schools, not on separation. Yeah. First Minister, why put £20 million behind your push for another referendum when it could be spent on delivering opportunities for our young people across Scotland? Yeah. First Minister, no, sir, it is, of course, just a fact uh, that the size of this Parliament's budget is largely decided by decisions taken at Westminster. And if Douglas Ross doesn't like the outcome of that, then perhaps he should have a word uh, with his bosses at Westminster, or better still, support this Parliament and this country having full financial responsibility. And he asked me, he asked me, how is the work to close the attainment gap in education going? So I'm delighted to give him a progress report on that today, and he doesn't have to take my word for it. Let me quote the Commissioner for Fair Access just yesterday talking about uh, the progress in closing the attainment gap in access to university. Uh, what the Commissioner said is that the work of the Scottish Government has been, and I am quoting, an unambiguous success, and Scotland is now leading the UK. So there's your progress report on education. Of course, presenting officer, 
We know the real uh, reason for all uh, of Douglas Ross's bluster today. And let me just, before I go on to that real reason, let me just reiterate... First Minister, if I may stop you a moment. I have already asked for members to resist the urge to make a contribution when it is not their turn to speak. I would be grateful if you could bear that in mind. First Minister. So just let me reiterate for the avoidance of doubt. If spending £20 million wins this country a better future, a future where we don't have to spend £700 million mitigating Tory policies, then yes, that is a good investment. But the reason for Douglas Ross's bluster, of course, is that we know that the Tories and Douglas Ross are not very popular amongst the Scottish people. But we now know, as of this week, that Douglas Ross has never been less popular with Conservative voters. He's now, for the first time, got negative uh, approval ratings. And Douglas Ross is in the unenviable position, presiding officer, uh, of the only Tory who is less popular amongst Conservative voters now than Douglas Ross is Boris Johnson. No wonder he's in a bit of a state today.